Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dop Dog and I are gonna see if we can't get this 1965 Chevrolet C10 running for the first time in 33 years. So I picked this thing up this summer on the old Facebook marketplace. Seemed like a pretty good deal. It was, I don't know, two-ish hours away from home. So we jumped in the old tow pig and ran down there and grabbed it. So let's just go back in time and show you loading this thing up. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a blurb from uh, Mortski.com. Go check out Mortski.com, get your swag there, get your ball caps, get your shirts. We got Cowboy Cadillac, we got the Do logo, we got a couple of low lifes left, we got banners, we got magnetic screwdrivers, we got magnetic can koozies, we got pens, we got SS5 super scrapers, we're waiting on some other ones. But go check those out, and right now we're running a little special. We got these Duff approved, Duff air fresheners and uh i'm not giving them to mickelson to put on the website so they're not going to be available for purchase and the only way you're going to be able to get one of these duff approved air fresheners is if you get some apparel so if you get a ball cap or if you get a shirt every order this week chin's got the dates right down here you're going to get one of these until they run out and we got a pile of them so you're probably going to get one but it's got to be apparel it's got to be caps it's got to be shirts you name it everyone until we're out of those things and i think we got like 200 at least maybe we got 500 i don't know how many mickelson ordered but we're not gonna let him put them on the site we're gonna send them straight out to you guys as a thank you so yeah only way to get these get your uh, apparel from mortski.com you name it we got it at mortski.com because we need to move some merchandise so we're gonna get a bunch of apparel out of there so we can get some new apparel in so we can get some hoodies we can get some beanies we can get all that good stuff in there so we're gonna have a fire sale. We're just gonna get that stuff out of there. And to get that stuff out of there, we're gonna throw in the Duff approved Morski air fresheners. So go check those out. I haven't even opened this yet, so who knows what it might smell like. It might, I'm sure it smells good. So Duff doesn't like them. That's why we gotta get rid of them. Cause they don't smell like the stuff that he likes to roll in. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about you. Now back to your regular scheduled shenanigans. Well, we're here and there it is. Tucked inside. Got some work to do. Mustang. Oh, it's even a fox body. Your favorite duff. Hopefully it's got an LS. Well, duff. Thanks for your help tying it down. She's ready to go. This thing is, for the one picture or two pictures, surprisingly good. A little rust above the windshield. Rusty cab corners. Well, the cab corners are actually pretty decent. Doesn't have the spare tire. Tailgate's in there. It's ripe. I can smell the old fuel. Man, the box is good, though. This cab corner's gone. Typical dog leg rust. All right. Let's get the French out of here. As you can see, we got it back in the shop here. It's dreary outside and I got a shop that we're gonna probably lose anyway. So we might as well use it while we got it instead of working out in the dark underneath the tree because that seems silly. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Anyway, got this thing back. I think I put tubes in a couple tires. Like I said, this was like six months ago or four months ago, or several fortnights ago. And the hood apparently doesn't latch. So I'm gonna get my ratchet strap back. I'm really excited about that because I don't know. I buy, I, I don't know if I'm, you guys do this, but I probably buy 30 ratchet straps a year. I don't know where they go. I got a pretty good idea though. So there's one on the back of the rollback on that uh, 34 pickup holding the door shut. And there's one holding a bracket underneath the rollback so that we could get the bolts in. Sometimes we use them for leashes, don't we? You are just tuckered. We use them for holding hoods shut. We use them to hold box sides up. We use them as temporary tailgates. We use them to hold engines in place. So yeah, we're gonna gain three ratchet straps. I think these were brand new when we put them on. You can see how this one faded from a nice bright orange to not so bright. Same deal. Was this one? Oh, there's another one. Oh, this is a haven. Anyway, let's check this thing out. Like I said, it's a 65. Uh, 60 to 66 is all really same. There's a lot of interchangeability. There's a couple of big things 
the 60s and the 61s Chevrolets. We're just talking Chevrolets. I don't know a ton about GMCs in a little bit. 1661s have four headlights. 62, GM was like, da, what do we do? We gotta go to one headlight now. So they were just like, mm, I don't know what we do. We'll just take like a big dinner plate, pie plate, and we just put it in the place of the two headlights and put one in the middle. 62 grills are hideous. White Lightning is a 62, but it's got a 63 grill in it. 63, they finally figured it out. 63 is a one year only grill. I, I believe 60 to 63 are all one year only grills. Yeah, yeah, they are. And 60 and 61 had the big old eyebrows on the hood, and then 62 on up. They got these nice smooth hoods and then the knee knockers. So 60 to 63 doors, the windshield wrapped around to about here and the door comes up here and then goes up. Or 64 to 66 has just a normal wing window. They call them knee knockers because they come back to here and up to here and you smack your knees on them. White Lightning being a 62 is a knee knocker. I've never really hit my knee on it, but uh, somebody did hit me in it today, so Great day to be working on a C10 because I schmucked up the side of mine. Real happy about that. Hopefully insurance works out. It's not terrible. It's not a, the super nicest pickup, but it was a lot more presentable when it didn't have a big old crease down the whole bedside. Anyway, light ends a fleet side. This is a step side. It's a six foot bed. Typical rust in these pickups. Check above the windshield. It's really good up there. You gotta check the inside too though. The dog leg and the fender, another spot to check out. There's a support that sits right here, and that's what holds the fender to the cab. And obviously this one is rusted out, and that support also holds dirt in there, and that's what causes it to rot out there. So apparently somebody was gonna fix this thing up. That's what this guy said, it was like a father-son project. Anyway, didn't pan out, so here we are. All these pickups had six lug brakes. I think 60 to 63 was torsion bar independent suspension. These were the first pickups with independent suspension that GM had. The 59 on down were all straight axles. And then 64, they came out with the standard dual control arm coil spring suspension. And in the rear, they got truck arm suspension with uh, coil springs as well. So pretty solid suspension all the way around. I prefer the independent, the dual, control arm coil spring versus the uh, torsion bar that White Lightning has. The nice part about that is you can just crank it way down. Another good option, you can put 73 to 87. Chevy pickup front suspension, you get five on five. Disc brakes, so you get more of a wheel selection and then you get disc brakes, then you can put the power steering on there with an adapter and you get more drop spindles and bushing options and all kinds of good stuff. But there's nothing wrong with the six lug stuff. That's what Lightning's got. Works good, doesn't it, Duff? He's like, I just want to go for a ride. We wouldn't have gotten a wreck if you were with. But let's continue around this thing. It came with some extra parts. This pickup should have a 230 or a 250 in it, which I don't even know if we open the hood. It comes with this extra engine. The guy said, said it was a Corvette engine. I'm like, eh, not so much. This is a 235 engine. It's earlier. You can tell because the way that it is. This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an Aspen too because of the way it is. Maybe we'll uh, do a walk around showing the difference between a 230, 250 and the old uh, 235. It's got a flexi hose. I'm sure it's in perfect shape because it's been sitting out here exposed to the elements. So I'm guessing uh, we're just gonna steal the starter and carburetor off this and maybe the distributor and throw it in the weeds. I don't think I got a tailgate, but we did get an extra bedside and an extra fender. Uh, some of these pickups had a fender that was cut out for a spare tire. This one is not, so this is a little bit more desirable. It's a pretty decent fender, actually, so I don't know why there was a spare, even though it's for this side. How does this side look? Really good. Oh, the bed is the nicest part of this. Is there a tailgate in there, Duff? Oh, he just woke up from a nap. He said, I'm not working. We got some uh, plastic downspouts and uh, some shag carpet. I don't know if there's a tailgate in there. Like I said, 33 years, last tag to 90. You can't really read it. Oh, it's got a Barden bumper on it. Albany, Oregon, and Woodland, California. Oh, yeah, a diamond plate. Pretty common. Most of these pickups are shipped without a bumper on them at all, but there was a factory bumper. But everybody seems like they put these tow bumpers on them. White spokes. I don't know if I like those less than uh, Craigers. It depends on the application. But these you see on trailers all the time, so they're definitely trailer wheels. And that's what they should be left on. They shouldn't be put on pickups. 
Typical cab corner rot. These things get it real bad. And then the uh, rocker panel. It looks like they must have had it outside and had the window taped up. Because that wasn't me, because we don't tape anything up. Looks like we got oh yeah, a whole lot of debris in here. I don't know what else to tell you. The dashes are a little bit different. In the uh, 60 to 63, they got like two humps, kind of like the, the earlier hoods. In the uh, 64 to 66, do not. Oh, it's got a Hurst floor shifter. It's a Hurst Indy. Sweet. That'd be really cool if this thing had like a Saginaw four speed or better yet, a Muncie four speed. But I doubt it. Looks like it was just a three on the tree pickup. They probably wore that thing out and never serviced it or adjusted it. So they just converted the floor, which unfortunately happens way too often. Remember how I said it was good above the windshield? I lied. I know you can fix this stuff, but that's just a big old no-go for me when I see that rust because yeah see what happens is the mices go up the a pillar or the b pillar probably the b pillar and then and then they take a number two and ones up there and that's probably why my hands burning right now and uh yeah mice ruin everything oh this is a big back window you couldn't see that in the picture so when i got there i was super excited because you don't see many big back window step sides so you could have a this is a big back window this was an option back then they had a small back window i think they called it panoramic view but anyway the small back window is about like here uh, these are better for resale but i kind of prefer a small back window lighting lightning is a big back window but i like small back windows the custom cabs they had a, a stainless sail panel that went there these they're slightly different between 64 to 66 and 60 to 63. i think the grills from 64 to 66 are the same the one thing i do believe 66s had a different color paint on the dash and then they had backup lights but i could be wrong mojo's back I'm gonna go greet him. Oh, you're tough. Yeah, Duff likes to bark at everybody that comes in the yard. So uh, yeah, don't come visit us. Kind of like the guy who stopped last week and he's like, hey, are you filming? What does it matter? Don't stop here. So I gotta put like 80 more signs up on the door and hopefully that deters people from stopping. Don't come visit us. You can ask and see if we can fit you in the schedule, but we're usually pretty busy around here. As you can tell, we got plenty of stuff to do, don't we Duff? Headlights knocked out. Factory bumper on the front, kind of whammied up. Grill's got a hooey in it. Anyway, let's uh, get after this thing. This dog leg, real bad. A little rust in the door too. You only got two hoses? That's all they wanted to make you or what? That's all you had hands for. Well, this is unacceptable. Go chew him out. Tomorrow? And tomorrow. What's that? Tomorrow? Oh, he's gonna have the right stuff tomorrow. All right, because we don't want a rollback leaking everywhere, staining up the concrete. All right, let's get this hood open. Duff's not gonna be able to do it because uh, he doesn't know how to run a ratchet strap yet. You know how to run a ratchet strap? Don't just look away. Answer the question. That's everything around. Here. I feel like maybe there wasn't hood hinges. Yeah, because it definitely latches. There's probably no hood hinges. Yeah, definitely no hood hinges. Mojo! Wow. Well, help me take a hood off? Oh, it's got hood hinges. They just aren't bolted to the hood. Let's uh, set it in the box. We'll go your way. ain't looking so good on my end duff how's your end look it's got an alternator i believe 63 was the first year of the alternator we got some wire action oh they got the oh they set this down and then they wired 
the hood hinge down so that the spring don't poke you in the eyeballs. Here's our uh, bracket for our clutch linkage. Looks like somebody started taking it apart, so that's probably not a good sign. It doesn't have a flexi hose, and they didn't cut the hose at least. Lower hose is formed. It's got the fan is missing, so we can't turn it over by the fan. The air cleaner is missing. I'm sure the carburetor is seized. Oh, the, the choke is loose. Oh, the throttle's loose. There we go. Yeah, somebody must have been pulling this thing out. Exhaust is unhooked. Heater hose cut. It's got the heater hose, block heater, finger, my bopper, dealy. No power steering, no power brakes, which you almost never see on these pickups. Uh, starter's there. Let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy! Oh, coil's there. Nobody stole that yet. Hey, it's full of black oil. So, I mean, we got that going for us. Somebody unhooked all the plug wires. It looks like the number three is missing. What kind of oil filter is that? Oh, it's a champion. What a deal. All right. Well, I guess the first thing we do is we put a wrench on that harmonic balancer. Let's see if we can get her. Turn it over. Because if it's seized up, that'll be fun. We haven't done a lot of... I'm guessing this is a 250. We haven't done a lot of 250 stuff here. We had us, what, 65 Chevy Impala? And the guy said, yeah, I dropped the valve and it was running on five when I parked it. I'm like, okay, we'll find out. Sure enough, we had to run it on five. Sure enough, we're missing two rocker arms. One, two, three, four. No, oh. one, two, three, four. Oh, it looks like he didn't have a plug wire on her either. Go check that video out if you haven't. Ran pretty good. And then we had, I think it was a 63. Uh, that video got a ton of views. Uh, we had it hooked up 24 volts and it was just about ready to go, but we could not get it to run. And uh, yeah, I think those are the only two of this series engine. The neat thing about these engines is you can take them out and it's the same bell housing bolt pattern as a small block or a big block. So bolt them right up we're a 216 235 you got to have all different bell housing so if you got one of these that goes bad you just drop a v8 in there it's kind of like the one the 43 goes bad and old casper and no i haven't got back to working on that thing all right we're just gonna get rid of this belt here you can tell it's been sitting a while when the belt just holds its shape and it's got a bunch of rust from the grooves you want to come check this out no I was looking at this dirty windshield and it says tenant parking preferred property services incorporated so they must have uh, had a rental place you know I can't imagine that somebody like this didn't own their own home all right and there's no bolt in the harmonic balancer yeah I like when they turn by hand it's so nice I am all that is mad. Now since it's only been sitting 30 years, I, I see no point in pulling the spark plugs out and moving up those cylinders. So let's just throw a battery right in here and see what happens. I bet they took the battery cables off. Oh, there's a red one going to the ground. Yep. Get out of my way, heater hose. We don't need you. How about a power? No, well, that's the fuel hose. They plugged her off. So, oh, they disconnected all the wiring. And that's pretty much all the wiring in this entire pickup. But they didn't cut anything. Well, that was nice of them. All right, let's go grab a battery and a battery cable. Look at this gem we scrounged up. Doesn't have a regular battery bolt. It's got a regular bolt in it with a washer. Oh, and there's the remnants of an eyelet on there. And uh, got some bare wire there. And of course the accessory wire is black, you know, because what? Who's here? Just kidding. It's Mojo heading out. Freaking time change. Anyway, you don't even know how to tell time. What do you care? Stop yelling. No. Stop yelling at me. She been hot. 
she been uh, real hot, so it'll be perfect for this. And of course, the nut's missing, so I uh, scrounge a 3 8 nut up. So, we're going to tighten that up and see what happens. And then also, when I was uh, leaning my... Oh, that's a coil wire. Dang it. I thought I found the spark plug wire. Still got to find a spark plug wire. Uh-oh. The condenser? I guess we'll figure that out when we go to figuring out the uh, sparkage. All right, we're going to tighten that up, and then we're going to get a battery. You can go grab the battery if you want. You can pick this week's battery sponsor. A lot of help today, pal. A lot of help. There's something stinky, stinky in that heater box. Oh, we're not going to look. Yeah, the hood must have gotten, well, maybe it got ripped off, but there's one of the hood bolts there. And uh, the spring is missing on this side, so I'm guessing some bad things happened. Looks like uh, Timo is our battery sponsor this week. Oh, you gotta hook this up to get power in the cab. Ask me how I know. Uh, and when that wire gets shorted out between the radiator support and whatever, uh, that's that's bad news on Sunday morning when that, what the? I'm gonna have to probably get a battery cable in, but. Timo, battery sponsor this week. You too can be a battery sponsor at Mortski.com. Go check it out for the baddest merchandise and swag and whatnot. And baddest in a good way. All right, uh, I'm gonna go look for another battery cable in. Am I? Am I? No, we're just gonna put a lock and players on it. Jones way, who sells those? Is that the, uh, I don't know. I think it's the, uh, Fasten all? Yeah, probably fasten all. There. Fixed it. Fixed it. Wes, he really loves those clamp on battery cable ones. All right, time for a loser switch. Got a flexi hose loser switch. So we're gonna go down and hook one to the inside solenoid post and one to the battery cable. And uh, slingshot engage. Slingshot engaged. Nice! This thing's gonna light up for sure. Ain't it, Duff? You heard it turning over, he knows we're close. Uh, fuel line's already unhooked, so we don't have to worry about pumping stinky gas. And it's unhooked from the carburetor, so we got that going for us, maybe. So let's uh, get some spark now. And then we'll worry about hooking up all our plug wires and finding a missing one. We're gonna have to hook this wire from the distributor up to the negative side of the coil because the previous employees decided to unhook that. Okay, previous owners. I'm gonna go get a socket. We're gonna tighten that up. Let's see what it looks like in here. We, we saw the condenser lay in there, so it might not be good. Just kidding. Looks like brand new in there. I can get, I can get behind that. The rotor even says made in USA. That's a good one. How bad is the inside of the cap? Not bad at all. Okay, let's tighten that up. I swear these, maybe that's why the chain was laying underneath here. They're ready to hook that up and pull this engine out. I wonder if the bell housing bolts, looks like they're still there. Engine mount bolts. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, they took that bolt out. And this one's out as well. They must have got to the, to the bell housing and got confused, so they quit. Now we've seen a jumper wire going from the positive side of the coil the battery somehow good thing there's some bare copper on this battery terminal so now we should have some sparky spark if we can find a groundy ground and hopefully my body isn't the path of least resistance cheese and rice by the power of gray skull Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. Ah! Oh, 
no spark. So with that power wire hooked up, we're gonna take our screwed by Mortsky repair magnetic screwdriver. Get yours at Mortsky.com. Give her the old Mortsky flick with that thing not pointed at me. Not getting it. Oh, there we get some spark. Now we'll try it. I don't have a good feeling about it, but we'll see. No. So, are they open and close them? Yeah. They sure are. You want more Mordsky flickage or what? Okay. I feel better now. Let's see what happens. Heck yeah! Never buy new points. Don't do it. Wasting your money. You heard it here. Okay. So, now we gotta find top dead center of number one. You think they got a timing tab? Heck yes they do. I'll even clean her up a little bit for you. Now we gotta find that mark. You see Mark? Yeah, me either. I guess on the plus side, we can turn it over by hand. Or we used to be able to. Get the Cyclops put a little light on the subject. I'm guessing there should be a notch or a groove or something here. There it is. Right there. So, being a six cylinder, our timing is 15 is too young, 36 too old, 24 is just right. So we're either on top dead center of number one or number six. Either way, we'll, we'll try that that be a number one. And if not, we just gotta flip it 180 degrees off, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We got those decals available now too at Morsky.com. Jeff says you gotta push the merch so we can keep the shop here. Okay, I bet it is because it's pointing right at number one right now. That's where I like top dead center to be, pointing at number one. Does this cap only go on one way? Where's the niche? There's the niche. It's got a little notch there. A little notch there. I like these distributor caps that you don't need any screwdrivers to take them on and off. Should we get some compressed air and blow that cobweb out of that cap? Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, one. I'm guessing it goes counterclockwise, because why wouldn't it? One, five, three we don't have, six, and two, and a four. Ooh, I wonder if that 235 in the back's got some plug wires. Wouldn't that be handy, Duff? I'm guessing those HEI plug wires off the four three ain't gonna cut it. Dang, we put this hood in the way. Ah, no cap, no plug wires. Son of a biscuit. Well, plan B. Look at what I found here. One seven millimeter high temp radio suppression cable. It's French. Ah, fragile. It must be Italian. Oh my gosh. Carburetor link, throttle linkage is unhooked from the foot feet. Foot feed? Foot feed, I guess we're calling it. So, I guess we just gotta throw gas at this thing. Or hot sauce if you prefer. Let me hook the old loser switch back up though. I feel like it's not turning over fast enough either. I think that was definitely the problem with that last 250 and that 63. We didn't have it turning over quite fast enough. If we'd have had somebody to pull me around, we probably could have got it. But somebody refuses to drive a vehicle and pull me around, who would that be? The old Duff. You don't need the exhaust cam because the regular cam is going to cover the exhaust too. Hopefully this thing doesn't, you know, torque so much that it just rips out of place here with the engine mounts not being present. But hey, we're willing to risk it for the biscuit. All right, we chased Chin off. He's back to his editing cave. Let's fill this sucker up with some hot sauce and see what happens. Chin was quick to point out that it's got a a Fram gasoline 
filter. Replace every 12,000 miles. The old G2. Some Mexico hose clamps. I think this is a Rochester Monojet, they call them. Pretty good carburetors. I've had good luck with them. All right. Well, let's hook up our coil wire. Let's see what happens. Ooh, we got some sparkage, so that's usually good because that means points are open. Here goes nothing. We don't have to worry about a fan ripping our finger off, so that's nice. It was at this moment that he knew he fed up. All right, throttle linkage, choke. Right, slingshot engage. <laughs> Woo! We might be 180 off, but we're gonna keep trying. More gas. That's the answer. Here's something chirping. You hear that? I wonder if maybe uh, crank or rod bearings were bad. Clearly, somebody was taking this engine out. And I would say that they were taking it out to put a V8 in, but that other six cylinder in the back makes me feel like they were gonna put that in here. But I also know that they don't know what they were doing because that engine is not gonna bolt in here. Not very well. They could be done. You can put a 235 in a 63 and newer, but it's gonna take some work. And you probably shouldn't have started outside. So. <laughs> Let's give this thing some, some boostage. We got our battery booster pack. Keith Benoit sent us this thing. Good dude. Tough. What are you shaking about? You, you scared of what's going to happen when I hook this up? It'll be fine, buddy. It's going to be fine. Probably not going to go for a ride. Not just yet. We got to hook some stuff up. But we got we to get it running first, pal. I'm just gonna try to get it, turn it over a little bit faster. Timo just ain't got enough snooze. So Keith and Timo are gonna tag team it. Now does it turn faster? Not really. 24 volts? Is that what we need? Hmm. I think so. Do we have another battery duff? Oh, old Farmstead battery sponsor this week. That's probably the greatest thing ever. We got the old wing nuts on this battery. So we can just use a regular cable. Use the regular end on Timo and on our eyelet. Over here on the old Farmstead boat battery. Now, we just hook everything up. We don't want that hooked up. That's gonna be 24. That should be 12. Yeah, right? Now let's see how fast it turns. Way gooder. I feel like I can hear something clunking in that bottom end though. Probably the starter about ready to give way. All right, hook our coil wire up. A little hot
What do we got on hook so that nobody dies here? I suppose we should, I don't know. I want to take the valve cover off. We got some stuck valves. Is that what's clattering? Let's, I, I'm just going to feel good about taking the valve cover off. I don't know why. And it's not an intake that's stuck open because it's not popping through carburetor. It just feels like it, something ain't happy in there. I get my gut feeling the same. Pull the valve cover. And my gut knows things. So does yours. They're not 7 16 like a small block. They're 3 eighths. How about that guy who lit me up this week about uh, not knowing how to resolve the leak on an intake manifold on a Pontiac, you know? Because I'm supposed to know everything. I don't know everything about Chevy six cylinders or Pontiacs or even flatheads or small blocks. I know nothing. Okay, that one's definitely 716. Somebody's been in here. But they didn't have it tight enough so that I can't get it off with my three A's. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Yeah, uh, I guess the easy way to tell a 250 from a 235 is they got these dimples on this side of the valve cover. And also, instead of having four, or uh, in the earlier cases, the 235s, two hold down bolts, these have uh, many more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, probably a lot better design. Take that sucker. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, she looks pretty clean in there. Oh, man. Hopefully that washer we just dropped didn't go down inside the engine, but look at that. That's like, that's like new. Dang, didn't even tear the gasket. That is skill right there. Let's see if all our rockers and valves are doing rocker and valve things. There's a little bit of sludge in there, but she's pretty good overall. Oh yeah, we gotta hook the loser switch back up, my bad. Uh, the starter's already getting angry at us, as you can tell by the huge variation in rotational speed of the engine. Sorry, Mr. Starter. Does it bolt on like a regular small block starter so that we have an abundance of spares? Uh, of course not. Just hang in there, little buddy. We won't need you for much longer. What do you want to do now? Check for compression? Go through that disappointment. Hmm. Why did that one? Oh, that, that 250 and that 65 had a hole in the piston? There, where's, I gotta find the hole. That's what she said. <laughs> Story of the Slong's life, look at that. Yeah, there's your problem right there. Maybe this thing's got a hole in a piston, just like that one. Maybe these things are notorious for that. You know, all the HPs, the NOSs, the nitrous oxides. Factory on these things, for sure. Maybe the timing's off. I don't know, if we could pull the spark plug out. Okay, so this, we could figure that out here. So this is exhaust and that's intake. So we go to where the intake opens and then go a little bit further. And that's when we want it to go bang. Okay, intakes just opening. Twelve volt solenoid. Does not like 24 volts. You're fine! My brand new battery cable and my Timo battery posts are not so fine anymore though. What's your problem? What if we just go back to 12 volts? Is it still? I think the solenoid welded itself. Yep. 
Well, we're gonna have to fix the starter solenoid now. Yeah, so your starter solenoid is basically like a, it's a solenoid, it's like a relay. So it just, uh, when you hit the loser switch, it, it closes that circuit, and tells your starter to kick over. And uh, that whole action, closing the circuit, is uh, permanently closed right now. And that's, that means we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to address the situation there. I suppose we could just put a Ford solenoid in line and then just use the loser switch to control that. That would be some, some real hackery. Let's just turn it over by hand here. Find top dead center. And now we'll just, we'll just forget about that starter. Okay, I can't turn it over. For some reason. Ooh, there we go. Son of a... How did this thing turn over so good before? <sighs> hmm. Well, we gotta fix that starter, so let's get it up in the air. Maybe we can turn it easier from down there. I guess we got the inspection cover we could take off. We could always turn it over on that. Dang it! These things were going so well. Until they weren't. I really don't need you sitting here farmstead. We're gonna sit you on the ground. We got this gem up in the air. Let's uh, take a peek at the old underneath and see how much disappointment we can find down there. Well, it was definitely uh, leaking a whole lot of something. So maybe it was leaking engine oil and they ran it out of oil at one point. So there's that. Drum brakes, obviously this didn't come out on pickups until 71 and they were factory. Not an option, just you got the disc brakes. This is our clutch linkage. Here's our starter instead of the vertical bolts, which these engines have. Uh, automatics have those vertical two staggered or inline bolts. And then the manual's got two going in this way and then one coming in from the back side. Clutch is still in there and hooked up. Somebody had the speedo cable unhooked. Oh, they were gonna take the transmission off. Maybe that's what's squeaking. Transmission bolts are definitely out. Uh, the old uh, bell housing bolts are out. Or the bell housing mount bolts. We got two engine mounts up there and then two of these bell housing. I don't know why they put those bolts back in there and they're crooked and they're terrible. It's three speed. It's only got two shift rods. Your worthless information of the day if it's got to have three. So you got like first and reverse, and then second and third. If it's a four speed, you got first and second, third and fourth, and then a reverse lever. So, dang it. Not a four speed. Cab supports are, they're soft. That's definitely carpet there. Uh, this cab support, it's fine. Well, uh, what do they call that? Plumber's tape? That's the good stuff. Definitely what you want to see. That's some high-end build there. Floors and the old ooh, inner rocker held on by hopes and dreams. This uh, cab supports a whole lot better. You don't even really need that. I mean, all your cab supports right there. Here's that truck arm suspension. Uh, hose clamps. I think I'd rather see hose clamps for structure than I would the old, old plumber's tape, but I'm, I'm sure it was just there for the parking brake cable, which we no longer need. Clearly it was a burnout machine. They put a fine threaded bolt into the uh, brake line because we don't need rear brake lines. I don't know why you wouldn't just fix the rusty brake line, but hey, to each their own. Uh, you'll also notice something's missing here and that something is a drive shaft. Not to worry though, this has got the SEMA Drive shaft option. It's the Bluetooth drive shaft. Got another one, boys. A little rust and Bluetooth. Look what I found. Uh, other than lack of floor pans, I found not only the drive shaft, but I found the tailgate. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited about that. Uh, some assembly required on a bed floor. To the layman, that looks like a pallet, but if you're like Chin and love doing arts and crafts, that's a bed floor. Because of its gut-wrenching forward drive, 
and ball tangling side bite, the truck arm suspension was quickly gaining notoriety with the local dirt track racers across the country. Coil springs, truck arms, uh, and these truck arms, one thing to watch for is it's two pieces of C-channel that are seamed together and dirt will get in there and not get out and humidity and moisture and they'll blister out and they'll rust her right through the old truck arms. But these ones look pretty good. Hey, high point. Uh, to put lowering springs in these, all you gotta do is you take that bolt out right there and then you can, uh, I think five inches is the most you can get. Uh, or you can take this U-bolt out, which you pretty much just torch or this, you torch and pound out because there's so much rust in between the bolt and the truck arms that you can't get them out. So anyway, you can put a, like a one inch lowering block right there too. Easy to lower and they ride great. NASCAR uses them so you know it's good. I'm guessing OEM shocks. Well, this is a treat, oh, a bungee cord. Don't pull on that. Some uh, nylon rope there and look at that. The spare tire carrier. Those are never there, what a deal. And this hot rod had the factory overload spring. So once you'd get enough load on this thing, there should be a rubber bumper there. Oh, this side's got it. This thing goes up high enough and then that rubber bumper pushes against the old leaf spring there so she don't squat out on you. For all the heavy loads that your uh, six cylinder, three on the tree, short bed, two wheel drive is gonna haul. So when you uh, put your spacer in there and your lowering springs, you just, Throw those right in the trash, and you can take this adapter blade out too while you're at it and huck that. Put some shorter shocks, maybe a C-notch, and you're good to go. We gotta open. Not a limited slip. Dang it. I think these are 12 volts. One, two, three, four, five, six. 12 volts. They all had 12 volts. I don't think they ever made a 10 volt in these things. People are always like, ah, oh, it's got a 12 volt. Yeah, it does, but they all had them, so. Anyway. Uh, I think the earlier pickups, like White Lightning, that's got like a big round cover on it, or as opposed to having this hump. I don't know what rear end, corporates, Dana's, yada, yada, yada. This one's different. This is probably better than what Lightning's got. So yeah, some good stuff under here, some not so good stuff. I'm not feeling good about the whole engine about ready to come out of here. Other than, you know, if it's junk, we could, we could all the messing around we did, which we haven't done that much, we could have hooked the chain up that was already underneath there and had this thing out of there, but. What fun is that? Yeah, people get mad when I swap engines. Even if it's a Chevy and a Chevy, you know, you're supposed to fix the original one. So let's pull a starter off and swap that out or fix it or I don't know, hit it with a hammer, throw it off a bridge, dump it in a lake, light it on fire. Oh, we haven't had a starter part in a while. Great, grand. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Ugh. Imagine laying on your back doing this. That sounds miserable. Oh, look at this. Look at this, Jim. Oh, I thought it said lifetime. It's the Midas lifeguard. I'll take that thing back to a Midas. Tell them I want warranty on it. Yeah, give me a new one. All right, back to working on starters. It's even got a newer selenite on it, unfortunately. Wouldn't that be a real crapper if they were pulling this all apart because the starter was bad? I've done dumber things, so whatever. I just remembered we had a 66 that we uh, lowered and did a clutch and all that good stuff. That was a four-speed pickup. That went to Alabama, I don't know, Georgia. But that had a 230 in it. it was supposed to be a 250 pickup. Somebody swapped a 230 out of a Chevy 2 or a Nova in there. And uh, yeah. But no, it was a 194. That's right. T is Tonawanda, New York, engine facility. 04 is April 15th. Isn't that tax day? And then uh, 0R comes up as 64 to 67, 194. So it's a little baby engine. Painted that other thing all up. Got her looking real nice. Kind of regret that one. That was a pretty nice pickup. The old uh, Arden Georgeson pickup. Can't keep them all. It's way nicer than this thing. So we're definitely getting rid of this thing. If you want to own this thing, hit us up. Mortsgearpair at gmail.com. Price and availability is in the description, which is right below the video. Don't comment down below how much it is. Don't message me on Instagram or Shopify or Facebook or 
anywhere. Ask me how much it is. It's in the price and availability is in the description below. And if you're watching this post, you know, 2023, if you're watching this in 2038, it's been gone for a long time, pal. 2038, what's that, 15 years from now? Who knows if I'll even be alive by then? Hopefully somebody unhooked the battery cable. I definitely did. I wouldn't do that to myself. Just kidding. I would totally do that to myself. Is it the starter bolt or the bell housing bolt? That's the starter bolt. Okay, do we let the starter drop or the ratchet? It's all coming back to me. We did like a 47 to 54 Chevy grain truck. Cute little orange one with a cute little, like a 12 foot steel box. And that had a 250 swapped into it. I've been around a lot more of these 230 and 250s than I remember. And they all been pretty good except for that 63 and this guy. All right, starter's off. Mrs. Mojo sent some oatmeal raisin. She knows them a favorite. So, the only reason I remembered the uh, orange truck is because we were talking about rebuilding the starter on the tailgate on that truck. And uh, yeah, we don't have a tailgate to do this on. We got a bench. But that's what we're going to be doing here today. Unless we go grab another starter. Which I don't know if I got one. Probably. All right. Let's rip this thing apart. Should just have to take that screw out and that screw and one on the other side. Oh, I love the starters. They're my favorite thing to work on because they always go bad on the junk that I buy because it never runs. So we run them hard and hook them up to the 24 volts and we put them away wet. And electrical parts don't like to get wet, and they don't like Dublin voltages. Unless it's a 6 volt starter, and they love 12 volts. Because 6 volts are terrible. And there you have it. One terrible Morsky song later. You got yourself a solenoid. Da, da, da. Assembled in Mexico! <laughs> but it's stamped made in USA. What the French? So it says assembled in Mexico right there. And then right there it says made in USA. So uh, America, we just make this little Bakelite cap there and the Mexicans do all the real work. I don't know that I've ever had a solenoid apart. And this one clearly wasn't doing solenoid things. So I mean, we might as well take it apart because we can't make it any worse, can we? It's already scrap iron. I'm guessing they're just a big set of contacts in here, ain't there? We may never know. Just kidding, we'll definitely know. In a timely fashion. Define timely. I mean, in effect, what is your, are you 15 millimeter? You definitely were assembled in Mexico. You boys like Mexico? You boys like Mexico! Yeah! Okay, it's not a 15. Five aces is, is, is. There we go. This is definitely never gonna go back together and work again. Five and three seconds. That's a good magnet on that Morsky screwdriver. It's yours at Morsky.com. Let's not take those loose. We might need. Oh, yeah, because why wouldn't they all be the same size hardware? I can feel it letting loose. I'm feeling like letting loose here shortly on some ribby. I used to have one of them fancy little quarter-inch drive nut driver, jobber, thingy mo Got it. Got it. This guy. That guy. You know, because I couldn't just grab a 5 16 nut driver. That would have been way smarter than grabbing this thing and putting a 516 socket on it. Okay, what's inside of you? Show me your insides. I just fell out. You gotta, you gotta know how to put this all back together. You know what we need? A starter tool. Hey, speaking of Morsky.com, we got the I'd tap that stickers that you really need. Chin's gonna show a picture of it. Here or here? 
all of the above. Get your I'd tap that sticker decal at Mortsky.com. There we go. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, you can see what happened. Oh, a little bit of welding action took place in there. And it looks like it just welded that guy to this gal. And that's what and that's what happened. And I think we just got it unwelded. So I'm sure it's just gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine now. That's about the extent of how much you can take this thing apart, it looks like. You could you gotta do it's kind of crimped together when you when they crimp metal, what do they call that? I don't know. Should we clean that up? Nah. We'll just put it. We're just gonna rotate it so that it's not uh, welded on the same spot anymore. And we're gonna try to use a limited amount of 24 volts. Okay? Okay. So that's gotta go there and that's gotta go there. We're learning here, folks. We are learning. Learning together like one happy family of automotive enthusiasts so we're gonna rotate that burn mark so that it doesn't line up with the existing burn mark we're gonna try anyway told you not to line up with that there there we'll just burn it in a new spot starters are really fun to work on in case you didn't know that's why i'm so well known for it because i thoroughly enjoy it okay now I'm going to get mad. There we go. Put that guy on there. Is that the one that was 5 ace? I think so. Okay. Oh, we already put it in there. And those two screws basically just hold that bake light on, apparently. I bet it works at least one more time. And then it's probably just going to weld itself together again. Which is strange, because... We've hooked a lot of starters up to 24 volts. And none of them have enjoyed it, I can tell you that. Okay then. Well. And uh, that's how you make an omelet. So we'll just put this back on there. Well, you gotta get it clocked right, dum dum. Come on now. There we go. There we go. And then we put it. If this starter works, we are definitely having a celebratory sandwich. We just got a shipment of Wibbies in. Some poor soul drove from Colorado to Minnesota to go try to shoot a deer, and he asked if he could haul some Wibbies over, and I said, "Absolutely." Because we've been without the Wibbies for a couple of months, at least a month, and that is a gall dang shame. We're ready to bolt it back on. Mortsky starter repair. 18 minutes or less or your money back. Just kidding. Don't bring me your starters. Absolutely do not. Take them to Wes. Because he'd probably do it upright. The one nice thing about these starters that bolt in through the face here is you don't need to shim them. There's uh, no shimming process. So that is great. Until they don't line up and then you're like, oh, now what do I do? Nothing, you just run it. Or you get a different one. Or you take a four inch flap disc to it. Really make a poor decision. Ah, all right, one starter. Re did, did, did. Redone, re not refurbished, not remanufactured, not rebuilt. Mortskied, definitely Mortskied. We're back on the ground here just to alleviate some of the strain on our starter mechanism thing or a bopper dealy. Let's uh, pull some spark plugs out, and that way we're going to hold back all the pisses of compression, like probably like a whole 22 to 28 per cylinder. So let's do that quick. Guessing there at 13 16 Yep. Ooh, that's a good one. She's nice and tight. Let's 
you get it nice and tight. That spark plug is not nice and tight. Nice and rusty champion RN12YC though. Not real tight there either. Look how rusty the threads are on that thing. Weird. But a little black. Nothing too crazy. Should be fine. And it looks like they're all matching champions, so probably wasn't an oil burner they were putting in one or two spark plugs at a time in. Now, let's hook our battery cable back up. Get our loser switch. See how she sounds. Let's see what happens. Started work twice now. And it's uh, blowing some cattail fuzz around, so we got some compression in a couple of them. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find top dead center. Let's uh, let's do that. So we want the intake to open. Piston's gonna go down, pulling fuel and air in. Valve's gonna close. Piston's gonna come up. And we gotta catch it right when it's at the top. Exhaust just open. Intake just open. Man, this thing must have a short stroke. Ugh. That thing is a real bug at a turn. Okay, we were definitely 180 degrees off. Act like you're not surprised. It's probably because somebody else has had this distributor out and put it at 180 degrees off. Because I like to have it point at number one when it's at number one top dead center. Makes sense if you don't think about it. Like I said, when it was at top dead center before, it was actually at top dead center number six. Uh, it was pointing at number one, so I thought, well, that would make sense. Top dead center number one, one's pointing at number one, because that's what I like to do. Small black Chevy, you got number one over here, and that's which way you want your uh, rotor pointing when you set top dead center. All right, let's move some plug wires around, and then this thing's going to light right off. And the starter's going to be so much happier. And then you're going to be the happiest boy. The happiest boy, even though we got so much to do before we go for a ride, because... There's no drive shaft and no clutch linkage and the radiator hoses aren't hooked up and neither is the throttle linkage and there's no engine mounts and the transmission isn't bolted up to the bell housing. But it's really not that much if you don't think about it. And then you get all done and it's a 256 cylinder. As much as I appreciate the duff hugs, I gotta get back to work. Oh, I know, I know. You know, it would go twice as fast if you helped. Think you could do that? Not so much. Not so much. Okay. I'm getting back to work. Oh, you big baby. You know, let's check for compression while we're here. Not with a gauge. With the old thumb gauge. Or maybe the middle finger gauge. Not a ton, but compression anyway. Pretty good compression. A little bit. Oh. Well, I got compression. There's none of them that are dead, Duff says. See what happens when you when you don't set top dead center where it needs to be? Look at that. Number six is like fiddle string tight. If we get this thing running, we might have to uh, pull the distributor cap and flip it 180 because, yeah. And then, like these two wires are tighter than they should be on them too. Anyway, do things right sometimes. Hot sauce. 
Maybe it'll turn over easier. Put the timing correct. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Oh. Well, let's uh, let's hook the coil up and then see what happens. Yeah, the timing is off, so the, the rotor didn't line up with the stud on the cap, so we're gonna pull the distributor and set it up right, because it's, it's hitting too soon right now, and that's why the starter's kicking back on us. I think. I don't know a lot of things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this cap off, and we're gonna get her to top dead center number one, which is, we know pointing right over there is going to get us close enough. And we're going to use our timing mark to find top dead center. Hopefully that's right. It seemed like it was close enough before. Intake just closed. There's our mark. <clears throat> close enough for government work. So now we got to figure out what holds that distributor in place. Looks like it's got a little clamp down there. Is that loose already? Yep. Somebody been here. Now this should slide right out. Keyword should. Come on now. You know you want to. Don't fight the feeling. Let's go. I should be able to just turn that 180 degrees. Should. Keyword. Alright. I'll just drop back into place. Look at that. Let's point at number one now. Perfect. Put our retainer bolt back in. I don't know if it's not lining up with the oil pump drive, so we're gonna tap it over. And so there's gear that runs off the camshaft that runs the distributor and then the bottom of the distributor shaft runs the oil pumps. So we're just going to tap the starter over so that it turns the uh, drive on the distributor and hopefully lines up with that oil pump drive. Seems like it's already lined up. It just doesn't want to go back in its home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Like I said, not uh, super up to par with the old 230, 250 here, but it looks like it's much like the old 235. This is that retaining plate, and that actually just holds the vacuum advance. And uh, when you rev up the engine, it rotates the distributor. So, and that's not even tight either. And that's painted blue, and the engine block is orange. So, uh, somebody's probably been playing around in here a bit, but... Anywho, the more you know, the vacuum advance is not internal, it's external on these. And there's that oil pump drive I was talking about, and that's the gear that runs on the old camshaft. I can't imagine all that debris helps. Let's get the super scraper out. This looks like a job for the old SS5S. We got SS5s in stock, no SS5Ss or SS1s. It's hard getting parts right now. There's our engine stamping number. We're not going to look that up because it's a six cylinder and I really don't care. Neither do you. Of course, now we got to find top dead center again. So we should be able to drop this in. Pretty close to where we need it to be. Must be all the way down. So we can take this clamp loose for the vacuum advance. We should be able to slide that up and down. There we go. I feel like somebody just had it clamped all the way up there. And that ain't where it's supposed to be probably. Let's try this again. Alright, pointed at number one. 
We're going to turn it over, see if it drops down any further. It should be an oil pump. There, it dropped down. Now, we're going to slide our vacuum advance down and put our retainer bolt in, and we're going to lock it in place. Look at how tight it is. They got the fuel pump right there, the vacuum advance right there, and the oil filter right there. There is like no real estate. Okay, let's do this firing order distributor cap thing again. So, number one we set up is there's the center of your distributor. Right between the center of the distributor and that spark plug should be number one. So that one right there. Let's grab our shortest plug wire. One. Now we just gotta do five more. Okay. Let's try this again, I guess. Alright. It's gonna do it this time. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Just gotta get that timing right, boys and girls. Don't sound too bad. No, of course, it won't start again. Look at all the blow by shooting out of there. That's not so good. We got it running. Now we got a decision to make. We gotta hook the transmission back up. We gotta hook the radiator hoses up. We gotta find a fan. We gotta find the throttle linkage, the clutch linkage. Hook up the wiring. Hook up the fuel system. Block off some heater hoses. Put coolant in it. Put a drive shaft in it. I think we know Duff's answer. He says, but boss, we gotta do it so we can go for a ride. All right. Let's empty that bed out and see what we can find back there that we can use. Let's unhook this battery cable because I'm not so sure my starter rebuild is gonna burn our shop down. Yeah. And if we're gonna lose the shop, we don't wanna lose it to a thermal incident, do we, Duff? So we're gonna scratch the paint on that header panel, you know? The next owner, I was going to pay extra money because you basically autographed it, right? Yeah. We're going to have to move the skid steer out of the way and should probably just as well go and grab the dumpster because I think a lot. Oh! Duff, want to go play some foosball? That's a Wilson Pro. Speaking of that, my professional cousin, I think he uh, fractured his forearm, they said, so tough luck. That's a pretty nice football. Too bad Duff don't play fetch, or do you? That's only the uh, the dog from the Mexican with Brad Pitt that carries a football around. Hey buddy, hey, is that your ball? But before we do that, old Mojo is on some next level stuff back there. Uh, I noticed the 
alternator was a little growly on the uh, Grand Prix that we did last week here. So as you can see, we got that off. I think we got the power steering leak fixed, so we grabbed the pump off a of 60 Cadillac because I got a couple of them laying around. The filler doesn't point the right direction, but it ain't leaking, so hopefully we can make it work. And I did find the fan shroud. I don't know if I showed that in the video. Everybody's like, oh, it was right there. But anyway, in typical Mojo fashion, instead of uh, just ordering a new alternator, he's got this thing all cleaned up. And he had a bearing and brush kit for a GM alternator, just laying around. So we gotta put that bearing in back there, put these brushes in, they're pretty much used up. And then uh, we cleaned that spinny shaft charging thing up. And he's got the uh, front cover over here cleaning it up with the wire brush, you know, amateur restoration things. What are you doing over here? Hard. You're overhauling it. Look at that. Wire brusher, good as new. What kind of warranty comes with this bad boy. Tail, Tail light. light. <laughs> the drag Tail light warranty. There's our culprit. The new one's a sealed bearing, so it's going to go forever. All right. Keep up the good work. I got Duff over here supervising you. You going to keep an eye on him? Yeah, he's got her figured out, don't he? We don't get to use the old growler on a alternator, do we? No. That's only starters and generators. Oh, you get to use your, your Edison light bulb thinger? Yeah. With the with the wooden with the wooden chopsticks. Uh-oh. We better grab a bench on top of all this wibby somebody brought us and take notes. We're gonna get educated though. Let's put a little light on this situation. Oh, we gotta build a, a base for our candy machine, fill that up too. So we plug our light in, you, and the first thing you test it, hit, there you go, hit the chopsticks together. And you don't want continuity between something. Right Here? there, no Here. continuity. No continuity. Oh, there you got her. Yeah, but if you touch the... Oh, if you touch the shaft, there's continuity. See? But you don't want continuity through that copper piece. Right. You don't want copper, you know, through there. And then you want... Make sure all the way around you don't want any dead spots okay what do they call that piece this here is the rotor the rotor yeah. here i thought it'd have some fancy name you could have made something you could have told us whatever you could have blown smoke <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right well that's a handy piece of equipment where do you buy one of those you can make them. <laughs> 1952 shop class? Yep. You probably got a bunch of them used light bulbs around for when they ban those, huh? Now you can put an LED bulb in here. Oh boy. Upgrade it. Then we'll, we'll put a sticker on it that says snap on. <laughs> oh man, that guy's a hoot. Just knows everything about everything. Hey, look, another starter we could work on. I think that's for a 371 or a 394 Oldsmobile. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, no more starters. Busy week of starters and alternators around here. All right, man, we're gonna have to get Mojo to help us with the hood, or maybe I can just get it with the skid steer and not screw anything up. And then we're gonna have to get the cherry picker to get that engine out. Oh, what a disaster. Decided to lift it up in the air because our shop's a mess and the cherry picker's up here. And the best way to get it from up here to back there is by going underneath because it's right there hanging out by that T Roadster. But what I also noticed is the little red here just shat all over my floor. Oh, it's running out the back of our transmission. Okay. All right. As long as it's not the engine. Yeah, we should probably do something about that later. Let's just walk around it and kick around the shop. Also, look at this. The old mices were up in the exhaust manifold with some mouse house. Blew that all over. We should start doing that for a giveaway. We'll throw all that stuff in a bag and send it with your merchandise order if you want. You know, send you the old hantavirus. Oops. But don't worry, it's just a torque thrust and a 35 Ford wire wheel that we'll pin between. 
We'll get her. Step in the oil. Forgot to tell you the plate 108 cuz. Maybe we can call this thing uh cousin it. I think we can burn a lot of this stuff, so we'll save some room in the dumpster. Throw in the old burn pile. Big gulps, huh? Well, see you later. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. You can definitely tell it didn't sit in that storage unit the entire time it took part. Back of the old golf carts full of debris to go burn. Back of the beds ready for a new floor. Maybe some sheet metal work. The bedsides aren't actually that terrible. I don't know why they cut the, they must have had some tie downs or something there. They got them in all four corners. One lone uh, divider strip. What are we gonna do with that junk? All right, we'll figure it out. Now I suppose we can lift it up and see if we can't get that transmission made it back to the bell housing. Hopefully nothing got screwed up. I'm sure the clutch disc has been real happy about that transmission hanging caddy wampus in there for the last 33 years. Of course now the waste oil furnace shuts off that we're not gonna record. Should be a nice shiny almost a mirror finish on this yoke so we're gonna clean that up because otherwise it's gonna tear up our rear seal that's probably no good anyway but it's gonna have to be cleaned up at some point if it's ever used again so instead of dragging it over the bench grinder we're just gonna try wire wheeling with the old milwaukee 12 volt doohickey and see if we can't shoot any of these newer retinas She uh, isn't exactly a mirror finish, but that'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Oh, oh what's in here? Oh, come on. What is in there? Is that a spider? Just kidding. It's just some debris. Looks like we're missing one of the U-bolts, but we got this guy here for a template, so we'll get that out of there. Go dig through the stash and see if we can find a mate to it. And probably some hardware. Now would be a good time to put a new I'll put shaft seal in, but since we don't know if this clutch is any good or if the transmission's any good, and it's really only a couple of U-bolts get the drive shaft out, put a new seal in. We're definitely not gonna do that right now. Definitely don't wanna just jam your shaft in dry, because bad things happen. Come on now. Oh, you're fine. And those caps still didn't fall off. Real good. 
Sometimes some of these, oh, there is a master spline. Yeah, we probably better line that up, I suppose. And then other times there's no master spline on the output shaft. So it looks like we're good. All that rust on the inside of the splines doesn't help me so well. Like I said, move your shaft up before you stick it in. And whatever you do, don't use a hammer to install the drive shaft. Because it doesn't help. Well, it's gotta be for this pickup. It's about the right length. If we were gaining ground, it is very slow. Whew, we got her slid in there. Now we gotta get it slide back, put some U-bolts in. I see why they don't run drive shafts at SEMA. This is a real pain. Right, this one has a drive shaft technically with that u-joint angle and that drive shaft size i'm gonna say that doesn't count also bonus points for it being loose it's like a 5 16th course thread tap run over our u-bolt here so that we got some nice clean threads i just hit myself in the head with the hammer I definitely wasn't using a hammer to slide that drive shaft back to get that U-joint into place. It's a real precise art putting these drive shafts in, I tell you what. Okay. Yeah, you bolts too wide. Back to the drawing boards. Hopefully we can find another one. I'm betting the one that we need is probably in the cab, but I refuse to let it down and dig through that mouse infested nest to look for it. All right. Try number two. I think we got a winner. Yeah. At least there's one winner around this place. Just kidding. Duff and Mojo are real winners. You can't win if you don't play. The hammer really is. Your best friend on installing a drive shaft. There we go. Drive shaft installed. I'm guessing now is when you would check the grease on the rear end and the transmission, but we know the transmission's got grease because it was running out on the floor. I mean, it had grease anyway. We should probably stick a couple of bolts on those engine mounts while we're underneath here. Definitely don't need all four. Two is gonna be more than enough for all the uh, horse torques the old 250 is gonna put out for us today. And these things, in my opinion, are the worst design engine mounts GM ever had. Don't ask me why. Just another thing I don't like. GM engine mounts from 60 to 71. Man, man, what I don't like about these things is that hole has a really tight tolerance. So you gotta have the engine tilted just right. You gotta have it up and down just right. You gotta have it fore and aft just right. Ford did kind of the same thing in the 70s. But well, they had a stud coming through and it was like a, I don't know, what do you call it? Teardrop shape. So if you got it close, you could drop it through and then you just started the nut. But starting a bolt in a blind hole like that just really sucks. And these guys weren't very good at figuring it out because I see this rubber is replaceable and there's three bolts holding that on. I think these are the same as a small block, actually. It looks like the same bolt pattern. They just have this adapter going to the six cylinder. But anyway, they took those bolts out front and back and they just couldn't get it. This bottom one or couldn't figure it out until they found this. So we're missing those, but there's one on each side holding it, so we should be fine. But we could stick a three ace bolt or four in there to hold it, but we're good to go. I'm, I'm glad to be done with that. Since we're here, we could just as well put this uh, pivot shaft on for the uh, clutch link yudge. That's just that pedestal or tower that bolts to those and it's got that ball on the end for this to pivot. So I get clutch pivot ball, pivot shaft. And then we could just as well take this heater hose fitting adapter thing off and put a plug in there so we don't have coolant running everywhere. So I had to set her down because I set our pivot ball bracket thinger on the inner fender. And then I looked in the cab and look at all this. Pretty sure I found all the hardware for the engine mounts and whatnot. 
So, yeah, fan bolts, and even our U-bolt. Uh, so we'll throw that in the stash with our other U-bolt. What did you... That oil's fine. Dump it back in the transmission of that Model A. Who? That pan was clean when I... Oh, I'm sure it was clean. Yeah, I right. cleaned it all out, buddy. <laughs> Just in case Head we were gonna, just in case we were gonna reuse it. Mm. Yeah, I would say she was due for a service. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, she's gonna shift like brand new now, huh? Yep. Won't sound like a den of hungry lions no more, neither. <laughs> He's a silly character, ain't he, Duff? All right, let's get this uh, Z bar. That's what they call it. That's the bar up there. This is the pivot ball for the Z bar. I think we need a couple of pieces of 3 ace hardware. Let's uh, take care of that heater hose fitting thing first. clutch rod should be straight and there should be like a I don't know what do you call it at the end of this like a washer that this rides against that's got a you guys have seen them know what I'm talking about it's a cast iron piece that comes to a point and rides in there and pushes on the clutch fork I'm gonna go see if I can find one of those in my stash but I don't think it's gonna be good because I don't save stuff like that usually maybe just kidding I'll find one guaranteed had to do some digging, a lot of digging. Found this wing nut looking, gall dang it. But anyway, this slides on the end of the rod and then that sits in your clutch fork. Don't ask me why they shape it like this or why they do it like this, but it's uh, what they do. And now I'm gonna have to find another one because that's the only one I could find. All right, we might have to uh, adjust the clutch too. Maybe not. Come on. All right, we're not gonna fight it. I'm gonna go back that nut off a bit. Okay, clutch linkage is as good as we're gonna get it. Let's see what we can do for some throttle linkage. This might be easy. And it might be miserable. I think I gotta just undo this clip. Slip the old rod out because somehow we gotta blow the exhaust manifold. And then we just put it back in place. And we're good to go. I think. Come on now. I usually do my best work in the dark, but I cannot see what is going there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Got her. And then, oh man, they had no idea how to take that clip off. So we're going to straighten that out. They just pried that clip around over the tab. We're just going to bend it back straight. Put that over our throttle linkage. Everything's working there. That's idle, so we want it to pull that way. This spring. How was that hooked up? Yeah, I think that goes through that shaft there. I gotta get over here and see what I'm doing. Yeah! That spring goes through that pin right there, so that pin can't slide out. Throttle linkage, good to go. Put our PCV back where it needs to be. Fan and spacer was in the cab, along with the hardware. A bunch of dirt's in there, so we'll have to clean that out. Hopefully we can just reuse this crusty old belt. So, let's work on that stuff.
dry up top, you say. She runs like a sewing machine. We don't need we don't need a bunch of lubrication up there. That champion oil filter is doing its job. Filtered the oil right out of it. <laughs> oh yeah, get our lower radiator hose. And then we gotta do something about these heater hoses. This one's got a fitting we could plug, but the one on the water pump is cast into the water pump, so. We either have to loop those two or uh, plug them. Because I'm not going to hook it up to the heater core because I guarantee that's going to leak. The problem with looping it is this hose is 3 quarter and this one's 5 eighths, so you either got to stretch a 5 eighths hose over that or shrink a 3 quarter down to 5 eighths. So maybe I'll take that plug out and see if we can find a uh, 3 quarter fitting to put in there, then we just put a chunk of three-quarter hose. Well, I tell you what, we're going to have to use three-quarter to loop it anyway to shrink that down because I don't think we're going to get five eighths over that. So let's just try it, and if it leaks, then we'll worry about taking it out and going to three-quarter. Seems like a pretty safe plan. Better yet, maybe we can get this five eighths to... No, not a chance that's going to stretch. No way. All right, radiator hoses are hooked up. Got our heater hose looped, fans on, belts tension. I suppose pretty much just hooking up fuel lines, seeing if fuel pump works, and then a little bit of wiring. We may as well see if we can at least get the starter working. Pretty much just the starter and the coil is all we should need for the key. Right, Duff? Don't even look at me. He's grumpy today. Oh, now you're gonna check out see what I'm doing. All of the noise in the shop. This blue one's gonna be for our oil pressure. Purple is gonna be for our starter crank, and then green is gonna be the solenoid wire that jumpers up to the coil, and so when you're cranking, it gives full 12 volts to the coil. We should have our coil wires. And this guy loops around the thermostat housing and is for the temp sensor. We gotta make sure to hook this up to the positive or we're not gonna have any power in the cab. Usually it comes off that main terminal off the solenoid and feeds the uh, cabin, but these old GM pickups went right off the battery. Otherwise, the old alternator over here is all we got left for wiring. Not a whole lot on this thing. Starter, coil, temp, and oil. Hey, that rhymes. I think before we hook our swoop to. I was gonna say, before we hook our carburetor up, let's blow that line off. That's full of crap. Choked? Do we need a choke? Can't hurt. I'm gonna take this stuff off and blow her out a little bit. Our reader seems like it's working so good right now, I hate to make it any worse. It's a good thing we did that, because the old Made in Brazil G2 would have let loose. Just packed in there real good. Holy rusted nuts, Batman. A little screwed by Morse. Oh, yeah. This magnetic screwdriver, tell you what, saves the day almost every day. There we go. Oh, there's still some in there. The French is that. That's like, oh my goodness. Is 
She was in there real nice and deep like. Get in there nice and deep like. Blows nice and free through the filter. Oh yeah, it's blowing out the side of the pump. Well, we're just gonna use a clickety-clack, I guess. The pump is toast. Okay, full of coolant. It ain't running out on the floor. We got our valve cover back on. We took our nurse tank and we just strapped her to the old heater box there. Had to put one of those tarp straps back in action. We got our clickety-clack hooked up. Uh, getting power from the coil side and then ground, we're just going off our uh, locking pliers here. We still gotta hook up key power, or, uh, battery power to the cab, but other than that, we're getting pretty close. Let's see if we got any brake fluid in the master cylinder. And I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here, but I'm gonna say she's bone dry. But the good news is, if we gotta bleed brakes, then we gotta bleed half as many because we know the rears are blocked off. No freaking way. There's still brake fluid in there. I'm gonna, I haven't even opened the door yet in this thing, have I? I'm gonna open the door and hit the pedal. See what she feels like. I would have never guessed that that was gonna be the case because clearly they were having rear brake issues where they parked it. What is this? Was there a KKK member that owned this thing? Am I, is it, oh, it's just a seat cover, Never mind. No way. It don't go to the floor, perfect. Look at that nice carpet too. 48,000, so I'm guessing 148. Somebody wrote on the keychain, 65 Chevy C10 truck. That's probably gonna need some lube. Looks like we got the oil filter with the 235. The gas pedal, we don't need that where we're going. Coil. Turn signal lever. It must be the 235 distributor cap. Looks like we got an air cleaner down there that we're probably not gonna use. All the good stuff. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about fixing brakes. Would have never guessed that. Oh, they took the threads right off the shifter so we can't even put a handle on it. Surprisingly enough, it seems like it shifts. Kind of. Hitting something pretty abrupt. First, would that be? I don't know. Should be. That does not look like linkage for this thing. Maybe it's three-speed linkage. I bet it's three-speed linkage. That seems really long. And there's no adjustment built into it. Whatever. That's the other thing I don't like about these floor shifters is they, they aren't very tight. They get sloppy. They need adjustment. They're poorly built. And then they sit down too low. Like, you know, the stock shifter on these pickups for a four-speed would be up here. So, I mean, this thing's like a solid foot too short. And that thing's going to cut up my palm when we're just jamming gears in this thing. But it actually shifts a lot better than I thought <coughs> or expected it was going to. So we got that going for us. No idea why the school bus tail light is in here, though. New parts? Are you kidding me? Shut up. We had a spare solenoid this whole time. That was, I bet. Oh, remember how this thing had a new solenoid on it? I bet that was the old one. Hmm. And a set of points? Definitely were the old ones. It's never the new ones. The blue streaks, though. Good stuff. I think while I still got it on the lift, I'm going to lift her up in the air and we're going to pull the drain plug. Because I don't know how long this thing sat with all the hood on it. So we're going to see if there's any water in the uh, oil pan. Because any of the water should be separated out. Because water is heavier than oil. I believe it or not. I mean, I experienced the Exxon Valdez, so I know oil goes up here, water goes down here. One of the worst oil spills in U.S. history. Looks like this has got one of them. Oh, yeah. Somebody stripped out the plug, so they got one of them replacement plugs. It's got your standard plug and then an insert that goes into that. Oh, man. And there's RTV all around it. 
We might be opening a can of worms. I'm gonna try taking this one. If this one will come out, we'll do it. But if this one wants to turn, we're gonna run away. Because I feel like this is gonna be bad news bears. So usually what happens when these strip out, uh, you buy these like oversized plugs and then they have a taper to them and then they have this insert plug that either spreads them out or you're supposed to drain them, I don't know the exact deal, but uh, something bad has happened here before and it's not gonna happen again, not with me involved. Oh, it wants to turn. What if we put two wrenches on it? Oh, I just hope it's straight oil coming out and then we don't need to spin her back in and carry on with our lives. It's not exactly pouring out of there, but it's oil. So, good enough for the girls we go with. Get that decal at Mortski.com as well. See, that's just a eighth inch pipe plug that threads into this oversized plug. RTV, that's a, that's a new one. All right, we know it ain't full of water at least. Well, as you can see, we're uh, don't have an abundance of space. So, let's see if we can't get this tailgate hung on there. Get that out of our way. And I can already see that's not gonna go well. So that little tab is what the uh, tailgate latch goes through. And there should be some hinges that go in there. And uh, we don't have the hinges. And we also don't have a tab. You think what I'm thinking? Just weld it on there. Well, the tail says it all, folks. Weld it on, he says. How can we fix that? We can put a bolt in that side so it can't come out of there. What are we gonna do here, Duff? We can put a ratchet strap across it, but no. What is this? US, Great Britain. International Racing Division? I didn't know the USA and Great Britain had an international racing division going on. Racing drivers? USA Great Britain International Racing Drivers School. Huh. That might make a good Mortsky minute, huh, Duff? Just kidding, we ain't got time for that. We gotta get this thing together. Well, that's what we should do. Just put a hinge on the other side. Make it swing open sideways. How neat would that be? How neat is that? All right, get in the well drill. All right, a couple of tacks right there, a couple down there. I could have put one up here, but there's a big gap there and it ain't going nowhere. It's just in there for looks because really we need that metal strap that goes right there and then we need the hinges and i put them in an easy spot so you can cut them out but yeah it saves it from just sliding around banging around whatever obviously this bed needs a floor because the floor ties into the sides which ties into the cross members which ties it all together so she needs some work but at least this tailgate is out of our way and won't be getting banged around and sitting underneath a 235 corvette engine anymore right duff right and uh putting my welding helmet on and taking my welding helmet off putting my cap back on reminds me we're gonna do a little uh competition around here these caps we got two designs we got the low life and we got the dew we got two options and uh i wear these caps every day and we're gonna do we're, we're gonna shoot for cinco de drinko the 5th of may we're gonna have a little competition and whoever's got the most well-worn, not the greasiest, not the dirtiest, the most well-worn Morski cap on Cinco de Drinco, May 5th, 2024. We're gonna put together a nice bundle of swag and grab packs and, and everything to give to you. And the only way you can be part of that competition, you got what? It's uh, the middle of November right now, so you got six-ish months to break in your hat. This hat is only Cripes. Was that March we got these things? So 
This cap's six months old, so your cap could look just like this, starting like this. But anyway, go to Morsky.com, get yourself a Morsky cap, start wearing it every day, wear it in the shop. Whatever you do, whether you're uh, a pipe fitter, whether you're a carpenter, whether you're a plumber, if you're in the office, I'm sorry, it's probably not going to get that dirty, but all you guys are hobbyists out in the shop, so use it out there. But anyway, whoever has the, uh, is voted on by the uh, employees here, me, Duff, Chin, Mickelson, Mojo, Pookie, whoever, is going to is going to win. So there's, there's, you got to get the cap first. You got six months. We'll figure out the details. We got the Morsky Repair fan group. You can post pictures of it on there. You can email them to us. You can tag us on Instagram, Morsky Repair on Instagram. But we'll figure out the details. But the first thing you do is you got to get a cap. So get yourself a Morsky cap at Morsky.com. If you're not a cap wearer, you're probably not a good competition for you. If you're not into, you know, getting your, your cap all crusty like I am, then so be it. Get two of them. Get one for, you know, wearing to... Uh, the events with the old lady or uh, going to school or going to church or whatever it may be and then get one for wearing in the shop. That's, that's how you are. That's kind of how I am. I keep a clean one in a couple of the vehicles and, and I got this one that I wear all the time. So we're not going to talk about that. Well, we'll talk about it more and more. But yeah, first thing you got to do, get yourself cap, Mordski.com. We got them in stock. We got the do and then we got the low. Okay, we got our cheapy insulated butt splice for power. Watch this. We got ignition and we got oil pressure and I did have it running for a bit. Uh, generator light goes out so she's charging too. Also this is a wrong ignition switch. This is for a 60 to 63. It's way too big for the hole. That's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> and there's a key on here which I assume is for the fuel tank but I can't get that cap to come off. And I can smell the fuel inside through there. So we're just gonna assume this thing needs a new fuel tank. Probably needs a fuel pump too. Just a whole new fuel system. And it definitely needs a carb kit. And somebody was drinking the Powerade in there. White cherry. Or threw their bottle in there at least because it's a trash can. Dang it. All right, got her off the lift, drove around the back of the shop. Doesn't run great, but it stops and the transmission goes forward and backwards and the clutch does clutch things. So you know what that means? No, not a test drive or a RIDE duff. We're gonna get the old don't spray the man with bib overalls Archer pressure washer because the windshield is terrible and you know we might as well clean the engine bay off now that we've been working on it. There's just a lot of tree sap on there. I know, I'm not the pressure washing guy and it's about 35 degrees out, so we'll definitely be keeping my clothes on, but maybe Chin will sneak something extra special in there for you folks who really enjoy your pressure washing, because I don't. I don't like doing it, much less watching somebody else do it. Clean a few goodies out of the inside. Well, that's all going in the garbage, but on the air cleaner, the stuff we already saw. Oh, and the spring for the clutch, I think, is what that is. All right, look at that, that thing looks way better. My cap looks way dirtier, so not a good way to get your cap dirty. Cowboys, I wanna see you cowboys out there with some duff dust, get some get some fecal matter, you know, from doing cowboy stuff up on your Morsky cap. All right, we're gonna let this thing dry out. I'm gonna go dry out. Hopefully this thing will start again. We didn't flood the carburetor, because why would we put an air cleaner on it? I'm gonna go inside and warm up. My fingers, I think they're there, but I can't feel them. 
and the neighbors are done tiling. But yeah, she uh, cleaned up pretty good. <laughs> Needs a window. Also, I took the carpet out because it was full of glass, which is from said window. Uh, yeah, it was structural carpet, so uh, we're just, just gonna pretend like that never happened. Doors open and close nice though. Figured better show you the uh, damaged old white lightning. So I was headed to town to get my ears lowered and I was pulling up the stop sign on Main Street, looking left, looking right, slowing down and look over and I see a topper on a dent side Ford 79 with the square headlights coming right at me, <laughs> slid me sideways and I stopped and he goes, did I hit you? And I'm like, no, I just stop in the middle of the street for no reason all the time. I'm like, yeah, you did. And this guy's back window, the back of his back window on the front of the front window on the topper, you couldn't even see through and so he's driving like ray charles so i was real impressed with that but he did have american family insurance and they've reached out to me and hopefully we're gonna get this all resolved and northwest auto body in fargo is hopefully gonna patch her all up but yeah he had one of them aftermarket tow bumpers and he caught right about there you see creased her pretty good got into that tail panel just a little bit uh, it would mostly pop out but there is a crease and I had to pull it off the tire you can see it was rubbing on the tire and I mean white lightning isn't the most perfect pickup but she's pretty dang presentable so I want to get that fixed and here's a quick little Mortsky minute for you uh, how I got into 60 to 66 C10s my dad had a yellow 65 C10 short step had six lug rallies on it had a stock seat that was all recovered it was this nice yellow it said yadu on the license plate i don't know where that came from we'd sneak it into back to the 50s in minneapolis which is 64 and older and that was a 65 but we would just call it a 64 at a 350 and i think it had a quarter jet on it had the newer style gas pedal with a cable i remember him adjust it, heating up and bending the pedal so that the cable would get full throw turbo 400 it went down the road pretty good i think it had 373 gears had like a matching tonneau cover which was like two sheets of plywood that hinged in the middle and then he had it wrapped in this yellow vinyl that matched the pickup it's kind of a pain but it worked good and then he had a custom roll pan that he made or my uncle made and then it had some cutouts in it and then there was like taillights behind it, you know that 90 stuff monochromatic so it had the the front bumper was painted the pickup color i think the grill was too but yeah just subtle it had like a 7387 column which is kind of cheesy but it worked had the key switch and i remember there was like a block off plate factory tack in it but anyway just as i was about i he let me drive it a couple times before i had my license because we're real hardcore who are those guys they wave anyway some guys are still hauling green to town but I remember dad letting me drive it back from Britain one time and my mom was with and about the time I got my license, so 99, he had sold it, probably like 97, 98. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what was going on, but he, we went to like St. Cloud or Noka, Minnesota and he put like 6,500 bucks, which is good money at the end, probably reasonable at the time. And somebody offered him 4,200 bucks and mom and I had driven separate and he'd driven that and he like refused to bring it home. So I remember he sold it that day for 4200 bucks and like immediately that next week that guy was calling one of the title because he'd already had it sold and made money on it and then probably like 2006 to 2008 i ran into it back in the 50s and somebody put a like 88 to 94 seat and dakota digital gauges and some cheesy like early 2000s ugly american racing wheels that should have been on like a 94 chevy pickup four-wheel drive and there was ghost flames on it and these gals were driving they had it for sale for like 12 or 15 grand and we talked to them later that weekend and they had sold it so if you know where this pickup is hit us up morsky repair at gmail.com do i want it back mm, kind of but not really it should be easy to spot it's got this like little slots louvers for the tail lights and yeah like i said it's got an aftermarket dash in it now it had a stock dash in it we got it and oh it had an aftermarket like a billet steering wheel and it's got ghost it's yellow with ghost flames and it was in the minneapolis wisconsin illinois area iowa last i heard so hit us up uh, i think how it came about was my dad's brother my uncle got the thing and it had a, a good big block in it and he wanted the big block and this thing was from california rust free i don't think it even had a heater maybe dad put a heater in it but california truck super solid uncle took the big block gave my dad a good deal on this rolling pickup with the turbo 400 dad put a 350 in it and uh, 
Got it painted by a gentleman named Moon outside of Fargo. And uh, yeah, we drove the heck out of it for years. When the flathead wouldn't run in the 34-3 window, we'd grab our bags, check the oil in the old small block Chevy, fire that thing up and go to the car show when the old flathead left us high and dry. It's a really good pickup. I remember the alternator locking up going to a car show or just going for a drive to Fargo one time and took the alternator off and got a ride to Fargo and bought an alternator. Dad told him what it was for. And they're like, oh, this is different. He's like, just make it for a 79 GMC with a 350. And the guy looked at us funny, you know, parts guy things, because it had a whatever internally regulated alternator. I think it still had points. You have an HEI, but it's a pretty good pickup. I think it had headers though. I'd have to verify with the old man, but yeah, pretty good pickup. But anyway, that's, that's how uh, my love for the old 60, 66 Chevy pickups came up. That was like one of the first pickups I remember having around and we had that pickup for a long time just referred to it as the yellow pickup license plate said yeah I do I'll have to ask the old man where that came from but anywho back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans after showing you the side of white lightning and uh the more team in it with some history on the yellow pickup all the smells in here you haven't got to check this out yet well hopefully our points are dried off by now while we check the weather. When I turn the key on, when we hook the key up originally, the wipers come on, so I know they work. Didn't scratch the windshield, luckily. Why did it die? I know, I need to get off my phone, but I need to see how warm it is out. Sure enough, 35 degrees with a high of 38 today. How's the heater? We're definitely not turning that on. Come on, baby. All right. Okay, push that the other way. There we go. Is there a clickety clack running? Now the fuel pump's running. We're going straight off the battery. It's, I don't know. There's like nine volts when you're hooked up to the coil, nine or 10, because it goes through a ballast resistor. So maybe the $17 Amazon pump doesn't like that, huh, Duff? You got covered with the stuff that's in here. Look at this nice seat cover, though. Those are the, let me start the thing, come on. Oh, that shifter is terrible. also terrible. The good news is it's coming right through the floor so that'll keep us awake for sure. Yeah let's uh, open a door window. God that's terrible too. All the RPM. annoying sound in the world. Great. 
cut the doors for a stereo, so somebody must have had some banging system in this thing back in the day. Drives pretty good. Needs rear brakes. Just just go ahead and redo all the brakes if you want to buy this thing. And radiator hoses, belts. The wiring's actually pretty good. If it had headlights in the front, they they probably work. Oh, and it needs a side window and a bed port and some tailgate hinges and latches. Is there any taillights back there, Duff? Do you remember? I'm sure the uh, local authorities will let us know if they're supposed to be. But it runs and drives, so it's pretty good for something that's been sitting for 33 years. I feel like they were definitely pulling this engine out. We still got oil pressure in order to swap it with something. Hopefully it wasn't that 235 in the back because this thing seems pretty good. It's not overheating, no steam yet, and uh, no knocking, it's got oil pressure. With just a little bit of everything, you could have yourself a really good pickup. Price and availability in the video description. Here's the screen, here's the description. Go down there, figure it out, don't message us. Uh, if you want to buy it at that price after you find the description, hit us up, Mortsky Repair at gmail.com. Because I'm not keeping this one. And I need to sell this one in order to fix up White Life if the insurance company doesn't take care of us. So let me know who you got for insurance. Better yet, have you made a claim? Because that's the only way to know if insurance is any good. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's good. Boat more Batman says go with Haggerty because he says it's it's very reasonable for classic cars. But he's never made a claim, so I feel like a big company like that, if they were no good, the car community would have would have spoken out. I've got a whatever. I don't I don't know who I have. I mean I do, but I don't know. I know like the private insurers that I get it from, but I don't know what brand. Grinnell Mutual, maybe? I don't know. But I've never made a claim, so I can't tell you if mine's good. My insurance is pretty reasonable because I insure a lot of vehicles and I don't get in accidents unless somebody hits me. And it helps when all your stuff is old garbage with liability insurance. We do have a couple collectors that are fully insured. Oh, now we're getting a little steam. Or maybe that's just hot water. Oh, yeah, that's just... That's just water that was on the radiator, steaming off from the pressure locker. Pookie's got one of these things sitting in the weeds that he's never going to do anything with.
chasing the, the rail car, the train. Chasing trains! these extra gloves. My hands are starting to get sweaty. Well, yeah, it's the Rockies. You've had this pair of extra gloves this whole time? Yeah, we're in the Rockies. You ready to give her all the meat and potatoes? Well, I didn't even look bothered. It definitely does not work. check all right now oh, there you have it folks we got a 1965 Chevrolet C10 two-wheel drive short box step side 250 six owner three speed on the tree converted to floor via the Hearst Indy shifter linkages kit thinger running for the first time in 33 years she'd been off the road this thing somebody somebody's project they had taken it apart we're gonna pull the engine out we're gonna probably fix it all up we got this thing back on the road she runs drive stop steers it's got a title we didn't put the hood on it yet and uh yeah i mean if you took this thing and just pretty much you know just scab the floors together put some exhaust on it did the brakes the fuel system tune up you know pretty much everything but just one piece at a time, Johnny Cash it. This thing wouldn't be a bad little pickup. Maybe throw some rallies on her duff. Maybe maybe sandblast and paint the uh, white spoke wheels. Put some steelies and some dog dishes on it. Cut a couple coils. Put some blowing springs for the back. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not going to do it this one. We got other stuff. We got Rex already. And we got the four wheel drive. We got the, the, the blue. 66 then we got lightning so no more 60 to 66 is for us big back window super cool hit us up if you want to own this thing price and availability in the description right here below the screen morski repair at gmail.com we will not hold it we will not ship it we will not fix it up for you you can just buy it as is great opportunity and that's i mean you could pick this thing up throw a few grand at it and uh flip it yourself and that's how i started was like pressure washing these cars and getting them running get brakes on them so somebody can see the the daylight and send it down the road you know you can't richard rollins it and fix this thing up top to bottom and have 80 grand into it and try to sell it for 40 because that's that's not how economics works so anyway I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up thank you very much for watching check out our other videos check out our merch mortski.com Make sure to get your ball caps so that you can uh, be entered for the grubbiest cap competition coming up Cinco de Drinco. We got six months to get ready for that. And uh, yeah, if you get your caps 
or shirts right now. We're gonna throw in the old Duff approved uh, air fresheners. So get those while they last. Most of all Duff, remember, doesn't matter how you get it done. As long as you're having fun. You got fleas again? Just kidding, he's never had fleas. All right, rides are fun, aren't they? On to the next one. You're probably gonna wanna lube that up so that it doesn't sound like your uh, mom's bed springs anymore. What? Don't look at me like that. Up your regular your scheduled programming to do some picking. Egg picking. I get my eggs from Mrs. Pookie. And Pookie. And Bobo. He's the chicken protector. And because uh, of daylight savings, Mrs. Pookie's busy with her day job and the kids. And I guess you can't pick eggs when it's dark. I don't know. Maybe she's just trying to get me to do it. But here we are. We're picking some eggs for them. Well, hey, ladies. Uh oh. They might have large talons. Do the chickens have large talons? Do they have what? Large talons. I don't understand a word you just said. So I guess we get our five gallon bucket and pick away. What a fuster clock. That's cute. Oh my goodness. Look at all them eggs. All right. I didn't bring a tripod, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and collect all these and follow up with you afterwards. All right, there you go. I did not count them all, but yeah, there's, I don't know, two dozen, two and a half dozen, three dozen, four dozen. Doesn't matter. Kitty cat, what are you doing in here? This is for chickens only. Well, see you later. So obviously we did not bring Duff with because of the gray cat. And any other colored cats, for that matter. And uh, Duff's a bird dog. So, yeah, I don't know how he would do with chickens. Nor do I want to find out. There's Black Cat. And then there's Bobo, the chicken protector. All right. Do you like eggs, Bo? Do you like eggs, Bobo? Who's a good puppy? Who's a good puppy, Bobo? Oh, who's a Bobo do, Bo? Oh, you want a belly rub? Bobo wants a belly rub. Oh, chicken boy. Yeah, 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 you're so tough. All right, back to work. No, Mr. Kitty, we're not gonna pay you. We got things to do in the shop. You guys just follow me around now? Oh, I suppose they're mad that I stole their eggs. Uh-oh. <laughs> 